guys, I'm Chantelle and I blog over at Intentional Homeschooling and today we want to talk about the books that we read in the month of March. And you have the hic she has the hiccups yes. the whole time. Um, <laughs> so this is Reka. She is, how old are you? Ten. I knew that. I wasn't asking because I didn't know. Um, and so we are going to talk about the books we read together. Um, Ephraim is seven and he decided he didn't want to do the video with us. So I'm going to talk about a little bit what he read, uh, what we read together. Rika's going to talk about what she read and then I'm going to talk about a couple books that I read in the month of March. So let's start with what we read together. So we were doing the Africa Gather Round unit study and so Flat Stanley was one of the books recommended on there. So I thought I would pick this one up. This is the African Safari Discovery. This was my very first Flat Stanley. Had you read any before? Oh, you read the I read the original because we ha had it, so I was just... Yes. Uh, well, when people call you up for supper and then we don't actually eat for another 10 minutes. So then then you, you, then you read do. the book. Yeah. Um, this is a very, very short little book, big words. Um, I had hoped this would take us through different countries in Africa and we would like get to know some things. Did you learn anything about Africa from this book? No. No. I, I, mm. I was kind of disappointed in the actual book. This is a great one like for you know, if you have an early reader and they are learning to read and they want something kind of interesting, Flat Stanley is flat because a bulletin board fell on him. Um, but as far as like, you know, in addition to our unit study, I thought this was kind of lame. Yeah, it wasn't very interesting. Then the other book that we read uh, together is Case Closed. Yes. And judging from your face, you like this one. So this is just a mystery story where we follow a boy whose mom owns a detective agency and she's sick and they really need the money so they really need um, this case to be solved and so him and his best friend and his best friend's brother who is like an annoying pest d decide to solve this case yeah. and yeah so it's choose your own adventure we failed a few times mm -hmm. some majorly bad things happened because we did a terrible job uh, yeah and then uh, eventually we did figure it out mm -hmm. eventually and you guys so i think the little brother was really annoying and really took away from the story for me, but you guys loved him. Of course. Yes, they were just like How constantly you? cracking up and thought he was amazing. How could you so, not like him? Maybe he was too realistic, a very whiny six-year-old. Um, yeah, so we have book two, and this one was really cool because there was some like actual puzzles to solve mm -hmm. throughout the book. Let's see if we can find another one. Oh, we didn't get to solve that one. We didn't do a lot of them. Well, that was a cool one. But, oh, well, yeah, we can't we show that. our answer. Yeah, no, we can't. We can't show that one. That would ruin it for people. So there are still a number of different things that we didn't do in here that we could go back and try a different route. Yeah. But we did figure out the answer. So overall, like out of five stars, how much would you give this one? Five. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So we have book two. We will do this eventually. We used to always listen to an audiobook at a mealtime, but since we got a seven-month-old two months ago, uh, we haven't done that as much. We've been listening to the book of Matthew together as a family for one meal, mm -hmm. and we did just start a book, so next month we'll hopefully have a book to update there. Now let's talk about the books you read. I think you have them in order from the ones you enjoyed the most to the least, is that, or is it... Um... How, how do you have this here? Not quite. Okay. Start with... Do you want to start with the most or the least? Least. Okay. Let's start with the okay. least. Um, I'm so disappointed that you didn't enjoy this book, but I understand why. Nola Holmes. Nola Holmes, The Case of a Missing Marquis, book one. So this is kind of like Sherlock's little sister, Sherlock and Mycroft's little mm -hmm. sister, Enola, and their mom goes missing and she has to figure out what happened, right? Mm hmm And tell me your thoughts on the book. Well, <sighs> number one, she never actually finds her. Like Well it's a series. Yeah, but uh, I and then there were so many words because it was from like, you know, back then that I didn't understand. It was kinda hard to read. Right, so there were some major parts of the mystery that involved um attire from back in yeah. this day, I think it was eighteen eighty, that she didn't understand and therefore missed some things. Um they did actually figure out what happened to the mom. I can't remember. Yeah. It was I kind, want to of, say it like, kind of just was a very general thing at the end. Um, yeah. yeah. So what was your star rating on this one? At first, I did 
three, but then I changed it to two. Two? Okay. <laughs> then let's go to your next one. The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures, Adventures. of Bronte Metalstone. I gave that one a four star. I like it. It just... I don't know. There was one part I didn't like. Okay, so this one's about a girl whose parents die in, in like a... I don't know what they get killed by pirates yes and then she has to go and deliver gifts to her 10 aunts mm -hmm. and these are the adventures that this takes her on and there were some parts you didn't like i think there was just one but four is high for me yes so. you you did enjoy it overall yes i did there were some funny parts this one reminded me of it reminded me a little bit of like unfortunately the or fortunately the milk mm -hmm. crossed with I don't know, some other books. I can't quite figure it out. But I think it was a cool little story. Yeah. And then you read Mrs. Smith's Spy School for Girls, the first yes. one. The, yeah, the first one, which I don't have in book copy. I think, yeah, I gave that one a four also, but yeah, it was good. It just, yeah, this is one of the higher ones. So tell me what happens in Mrs. Smith's Spy School for Girls. Oh. Is it a spy school for it's girls? number one. I'm, I'm Just the general idea. Well, well, in Mrs. Smith's Spy School for Girls, um, this girl named Abigail, she gets sent to boarding school, but there's actually a secret spy... Um, like academy? Think, like academy underneath it mm. in what they call the catacombs, but okay. it's just a giant basement. And I don't know. She and her two best friends... Is it Charlotte? I really have no idea. It doesn't matter. But yeah, they, I don't know, they're very troublesome and they get in trouble a lot and then Abigail wants to be be a spy but the thing is, the reason I don't like this series is... Well you do like the series. The reason do, you don't like the name of the, the series. The reason I don't like the name of the series is, number one, Mrs. Smith does not own the spy school for girls. Even though it's called Mrs. Smith's yes. Spy School for Girls. Okay. Yes. She owns it for the first, like, five chapters, it <laughs> feels like. And then the only characters I know who go to that Spy School for Girls are Abigail for, I think, two days. And then a girl named Veronica who is only in the, the book for a little bit. And then the other other one is a boy named Toby. <laughs> so it's not really Mrs. Smith's uh, spy school, and, and it's, it's not, not really, really for girls? He, yeah. Or not just for girls? Like, he works behind the scenes, okay. but still. Anyway. So you read book one, and then, then book yeah. two? Yeah, book two was more interesting. I gave that a four and a half. This one's power play. Oh, you gave this one four and a half? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And then one more book that you finished this in March? Mm. Legacy, I think. That one is a five star. So what book number is this? Eight. This is book eight in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. Yeah. So you can't tell us anything about what happened no, in book I eight. No, I can't. But can you tell us kind of just a brief introduction to the series? Oh, I don't remember the first book very much. Okay, so it's so. a it's a series about a girl named Sophie yeah. who finds out right at the beginning of book one that uh, she, well, she knew she was a telepath. She knew she yeah. could read people's minds. She didn't know it was called a telepath, but... And the reason she finds out that she can do this is because she is an elf, an elf. but it's a totally different version of an elf mm -hmm. than what we normally it's get. It's not like the Tolkien elf. Yeah, or a lot of the different el yeah. elves. Yeah, so that was kind of your reading month. You're in the middle of a bunch of books, almost done a few books. Yes. So you'll have another stack next month. <laughs> Hopefully a bigger one than this. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You want to go do some stuff? Sure. Okay, and then Ephraim, he is a re-reader, or he listens to a lot of his chapter books on audio, so he's a re-listener. Um, but a new series that he started, a new to him series that he started this month is The Great Cake Mystery. Um, this is, so Alexander McCall Smith wrote the number one ladies detective agency, and this is kind of a spin-off series, but they've taken the main character, and now instead of her being like 40 or 50, she is um, like middle grade. And so it's really short little books. I shared this I think a little bit in my library hall and he really enjoyed it. I love that it's set in, it's the one set in Botswana, but it's African and you know he is from Africa so kind of like to get a little bit um, 
more stories that might have a little bit of that culture that he grew up in. Um, so yeah, there's that, or not that he grew up in, that he was born in. Um, and then he re-listened to a bunch of books. And then for myself, um, I am reading The Book Whisperer. I have read, I don't know, maybe a third of it so far. And so far it's pretty basic. Um, it's about a teacher who wanted her kids to love to read. And pretty much what she realized is assigning books to them didn't work, but letting them choose books did. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of probably going to skim the rest of this. Um, it wasn't really worth reading all the words, but I like the general idea of it. And then I read um, a book that is coming out right away, or maybe it came out in March. Um, I had a, an advanced ebook, and that was, what was it called? Love Centered Parenting by um, Crystal Payne. And oh, this one I wish I would have had 10 years ago when I became a parent at first. It was really all about parenting the heart. And I just realized like, yeah, that wasn't how I started out parenting. That is how I want to parent. Um, and that is also how I want to homeschool. And then kind of going into that, um, I'm still reading Awaking Wonder. I'm halfway through and I'm loving this book. It really is about like parenting the heart, but also just showing your kids God's heart and his love for them and the beauty that he has created and I'm really enjoying this. So there is a overview of what we all read in March. Um, we kind of like started a bunch of books. I think our April wrap-up will prob probably be quite a bit bigger because we have a bunch that we are like almost done. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear what you read in March, um, anything that your kids have been reading. If you have any suggestions for my kids or for me, please let me know. And thanks for watching guys.